Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and this video is a little bit different than most of my other videos. I am trying to teach myself the Google Cloud Platform, and I was in the marketplace and I found the COVID-19 data set. So I just wanted to kind of document walking myself through that process about querying those data sets, and I figured it would be a cool video to make. So let's go ahead and see what it's all about. Um, in the Google Cloud Platform console window, if you go to the upper left-hand corner and go to the marketplace, you'll see up here at the very top uh, the data sets for COVID-19 research. So they got a whole bunch of them here from multiple different sources. The one that I was looking at here was the COVID-19 data repository by um, JHU, Johns Hopkins University. And I mean, that's just one of, I think it's 30 of them here. Um, so they got a lot of them, but this will just give you an example about how to, I guess, work with them from a very, a very simple um, angle, right? This is nothing that we're gonna do here is earth shattering, but I thought it was pretty cool as something that we can just share. So let's go ahead and view the data set here. Um, this will open up in a new window. And is, this is their big query, Google Cloud Platform's big query um, window editor, whatever you want to call it. The dashboard probably is a good name for it. So um, on the left-hand side here, you'll see that you have these couple different resources. Uh, this one did not expand, but this one, the big query public data did. And the one that we're particularly interested in is the COVID-19... Um, J-H-U-C-C or C-S-S-E uh, down here. So um, if you want to just kind of like see what's in here, like this is the name of the table. Um, this is the name of the database, I'm sorry. And then there's tables in here for confirmed cases, deaths, recovered cases, and summaries. So um, let's just look at confirmed cases today and you'll see that these are all of the fields. In other words, if you're not familiar, these are like the, in an Excel spreadsheet, like the, the column headers. And then for each one of those, you have multiple different rows. So um, what we can do up here is just use some basic SQL syntax, SQL syntax to see what the data looks like. So we can do something like select star from, and then we have to give it a full path. Uh, let me see if we can find that here. So something like this the table ID, select everything from this table, and we might need quotes around there. Uh, let me see, something like that. No, it does not like the quotes. So select everything from this. Let's see if it'll help us out here. Uh, and semicolon, it might tell us how to fix it. What does it say? Maybe we can do a tab complete after this point because it doesn't like that, so tab there we go. So public data um, colon COVID. Is that working? Nope. Let's do tab. Maybe I'll just have to find it manually. COVID-19 J-H-U-C-S-S-E data set. Okay. And then we can pick confirmed cases. And does it want the semicolon? Maybe, maybe not. What's going on here? Last thing. Oh, it doesn't want doesn't want that prefix. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and run that query. So it selects star from, and they're using like these little tildes, not not a not a uh, apostrophe, just a tilde. Hit run. I don't even know what that's called, a tilde, a tick mark, I think. Hit run, and this will go ahead and pull out all that data. And it, as as we saw before, it has the province, state, the country, region, lat, long, and uh, another GPS piece of information and it looks like date, time, just date stamps actually, January 22nd, 2020 for each one of these locations, right? For each one of these locations, um, let's make sure you can see this, January, February, March, April, all the way down to today or yesterday. So 1024 today is the October 25th. Um, and these are cumulative numbers. So this isn't like you can see here that uh, whoever's in row uh, two here, Canada, Grand Princess, that's a that's some region in Canada. Um, they're not seeing 13 cases every day. They're seeing a total of 13 cases up until that point. So 
Um, we can we can narrow this down a little bit and get rid of some of this information. Let's just see if we can find out what the total number of cases is for each one of these uh, regions. So we can do something like select just the province, province, uh, P-R-O-V-I-N-C-E, state, the country, region. We don't really care about the lat latitude and longitude. Um, let's just get the most recent data. So we want that column as well. 10, 24, 20 from this data set, 20, 20, 20, just a 20. And then uh, we can do order by this column, the 10, 24, 20 column descending. So we should see the highest at the top and the lowest at the bottom. So let's go ahead and run that. And we got rid of a lot of those columns. So we're just looking at the, the, the region and then the number of cumulative deaths or sorry, cases. This is cases um, in descending order. So U.S. is at the top of the list. Uh, not far behind is India, then Brazil, Russia, Argentina, France. And these are, what are we looking at? This is 8 million for US, 7 million for India. And if you keep working your way down, um, it's just showing us 100 results per page. So the 100th most uh, cases is in Zambia with 16,000. Now, um, now that's that's good. That's, that's a good example. Um, I want to show you that this actually, this, this data is most likely what Google is using in their front end. So if we open up a tab here and just type in how many cases of coronavirus in the US. And they're gonna say uh, total cases for the United States is 8.69 million. And we'll go back here and see if that adds up. So we're at 8. Five seven million. That was as of the twenty fourth, and this is probably as of the twenty fifth because that's today. So, that's that's pretty much aligns really well with that. Um, the one other thing I wanted to do in this video is to get the total number of cases for the entire world, so we can just add them up, and we can do that by modifying our query a little bit. We can do select some of the the most recent columns, so ten, twenty four, twenty. Uh, from the same data set and we don't have to do any ordering. So what that's going to do is pretty much take everything from this column and add it up and we'll get a total number of cumulative cases for the entire world. And that is, that's uh, 42,612,959. And let's see if that aligns with what Google's public facing um, public facing website says so in the world and we got uh, that did not show us what we wanted to see so let's see yeah we can do worldwide here that also did not show us let's change this to worldwide total cases there we go 42.9 million cases of coronavirus in the world and again we're off by a day here so that's probably why we're seeing that lag um, this is my first time using BigQuery. There's other data sets in here besides just COVID. You got crypto, um, bank information, the Food and Drug Administration data. Uh, you can. There's a lot of stuff here that you can do some really cool tsunamis, really cool uh, number crunching on. So this is this is again just one data set. Um, that we're looking at today, but it was a good introduction, I guess, for me and hopefully for you too, about how to use BigQuery on the Google Cloud platform. I'm gonna to continue to look through this in the coming weeks, so uh, I'll hopefully learn a little bit more. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I have some other Google Cloud videos over here, so you can check those out too. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.